Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to make a colored pencil fuchsia with dew drops on it that are not on the stamp set. I'm going to add them myself, do a little no-line coloring using the Avery L fuchsia stamp set. It has two beautiful sentiments with it and lots of pretty flowers. The reference photo that I chose from Google has these pink flowers, the top part, the outside petals are pink and the inside are purple, but they have these little green tips on them. And I was looking at where the green turns into pink as it goes back up into the flower, etc. So I wanted to do that and I picked out a palette of colors for myself to be able to use. So I'm not going to put the colors on the screen. If you want that little picture, you can go pin that from my uh, blog page if you're interested in replicating this with my colors. And these are, by the way, Prismacolors. They are my favorite pencils, even though I do have the Luminance and the Polychromos. And I see all kinds of strong opinions one way or the other from a lot of different people about whether they like one set or not more than another. And I tend to find my techniques work really well with the Prismacolors. And that's just what I've always used and what I love. I love the color selection, probably even a little bit more than the Polychromos. And the Luminance has a much smaller collection, but they do put out a little more, more pigment. So it really depends on what you're using, what you're interested in doing with your color pencil type of work. But in the color pencil jumpstart class, you'll get to see samples of all three being used if you want to make a decision on which one of those brands you might like to go for but Prismacolors are my babes. really love them a lot. This 994 color as the secondary color for the pink petals works really beautifully as the under shadow. So there's some of these petals that you see the underside of, you don't see the front side, you don't see the outside. And then that color also works a little bit for a shadow color. So I can put a little bit of shading on the top of each one and kind of, there's in the photograph that I was working from, there's a little bit of striations little veins going up the flower petals, but I didn't opt to do them a lot because these flowers are really small. If I were doing a large version of, of a fuchsia drawing, I would probably do a lot more of creating that kind of texture that I saw in the photograph. And who knows, I might actually do that one larger in color pencil because I really loved it. Really, really beautiful and very inspire, inspiring. And I was kind of sad as I worked through this that I couldn't get the detail in it that I normally would like to get into something like these kinds of flowers. But who knows, they might turn into something else someday. But each one of the layers of color I've gone over really lightly first, and then I'm gonna use my Luminance Full Blender Pencil, I think is what it's called. Um, I really like the way that this blends. It blends without adding extra color to it. So the part of the issue with it, if you're if you don't get the coloring done well underneath, this isn't going to necessarily fix it, but it's going to softly blend the colors that are there without adding any extra color. And you can press a little bit harder than you did with the color. You can go over it again and add more richness of color to it as well if you need to, which is also good because sometimes if you get too much of that buttercream texture as you get really heavy and dark with pencils, and you can't do anything on top of them. They get all weird and waxy. But that doesn't seem to happen too much with that blender pencil. So I'm adding these petals with some dark at the top. When you're doing flowers that are turned upside down like this, the shadows are cast by the pink petals on the top, which means there's a shadow at the top of the purple section, as well as a shadow at the bottom of the purple section. So you kind of need to think about the cast shadow from the flowers that are on the, the petals that are on the outside, as well as that normal roundness that you would get by having shadows at the bottom, which is the shadow from the sun. So it's slightly complex, but I'm using a purple and a bluish purple type of pencil to create that really rich purple in the photograph that I was using. So get that all blended out with the Luminance pencil as well. And there is pretty much one flower. So I'm gonna go around and do all of the buds. And each one of the buds has a little bit of that pink at the top and then it blends into the green. But I'm gonna start working on where I wanna add each one of my water drops now. 
and just leaving some white space for them and getting deeper color in and around them, water drops do cast a little shadow. And I'm not going to get into the, like, there's a whole lot more that goes into water drops because they actually have their highlights on the wrong side and everything. There's lots that you can get into, but I'm going to show you the easy way to make the water drops so that you don't have to think too hard. Think of them as a drop of white paint, and you can usually get away with that rather than trying to go hyper-realistic with it. But some of the drops are going to be perfectly round, and most of them, though, since they're hanging on a flower that is tilting downward, you're going to get a heavier drop at the bottom and thinner at the top. So you'll need to kind of work with your shapes a little bit to get them right. At this point, you might be thinking that I'm doing what I'm thinking I'm doing, which is going back and forth to different areas and not staying kind of consistent with finishing one section before I move on to another. When I'm doing a finished piece of artwork, that's often how I work. I try on YouTube to stay a little more focused because I know people can follow along more easily if I just color one flower and stay with it or at least one particular type of petal all over the place and stay with it. But that's just not how my brain works at times. And I let it go on this one and just kind of bounced around and worked on different things. I, I look around the piece all the time to see how one color that I've just finished compares with another in a nearby area because how everything is going to be different based on how it relates to something else and that's just kind of how it goes so there are times like this when I may look a little schizophrenic in my coloring so now we're gonna speed up I don't know if you guys can hear the birds that I'm hearing like mad right outside my window but they're apparently trying to give a little atmosphere to the video either that or they're probably gonna be annoying because you can only hear a little Twitter of them but they're extremely sing-songy today, maybe because I'm coloring flowers. So forgot that little bit of green, and then I'm adding darker color around a drop. Because if you can't see a drop, if it's on such something that's really light, it doesn't really help to actually put a drop in there. You need to have some color for it to show up against, and that's really going to help. So sometimes you can have the, the drop, like on this flower that I'm coloring right here, on that top left side. You can have one cascading around the image. You can have it dripping off the front of an image, down the side of an image. Like each different drop might be in a different place on the flower. Don't make them consistent because Mother Nature certainly wouldn't be. And you might even go out to your garden and look at how the drops hang on flowers, especially if you have the flowers that you want to add drops to and see what happens in real life and how that actually works out. So again, you can see me kind of doing, doing the squirrel thing, going back and forth. Uh, forgot to do the under petals on that one and jumped back to do that. And of course, this is sped up, if you can tell. I'm gonna add my purple down below on these flowers. I have some fuchsia in my yard that are pink and white, but I'd really love some of these pink and purple because I think they're really striking very gorgeous but thanks to the internet I at least had good resource that I could work from for creating mine now when I'm doing these little things that stick out of the front I think what are they the stamen I'm trying to remember back from school many 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 years ago I think that might be what they're called but I am doing some negative coloring around them so they look like the stems stick into the little purple flower portion. So that's helpful sometimes to create a little bit of detail and add just that little bit that's going to make a huge difference in looking like you've got a lot, lot more in your drawing, even at such a small size, than uh, you might otherwise. So. Uh, squeeze in a little bit more of my luminance blender pencil get that all blended out nicely and in the color pencil jumpstart class there are innumerable ways to blend color and use your colored pencils so if you're interested in learning more that's a great place to go and try out lots and lots of new techniques some crazy things that I didn't even know I was gonna do until I started 
getting ready for the class and trying all different kinds of nutso stuff and trying out techniques that I'd only heard about years ago on the internet or when I was a kid I'd remember doing strange things with pencils and it's fun to actually do them on on cards and stuff in a class. So there are no flowers in there but of course that's why I'm doing flowers here on YouTube. Actually I take that back there are some flowers there's some faux watercolor flowers, so I'll teach you how to do faux watercolor with your colored pencils. Because, you know, that's pretty special. And each one of the techniques I tried to find several uses for so that when you try them, it's not like, you know, there's only one way that you're going to ever apply that type of technique. So I give you a couple ideas for different ways that you can use it and morph it into different ways so that you get lots and lots of use out of everything you learn in the class. So with my leaves, I have my base color down first, and then I'm adding my dark where I get all of my veins in my leaves and get some beautiful detail in those. And I'm using my Qu Quiet Sharp pencil sharpener, which is a huge monster. It is giant and it's, it's just really big, but it's really worth having because it gives you this really sharp point and I'm able to use a very light pressure on my paper and still get a really nice coverage of the pencil because I'm using a really sharp point. And it helps with trying to get all this tiny detail in there too. So these stems on the fuchsia I found were mostly purple until they morph into green just as they reach each one of their flowers or buds. So I'm letting kind of, kind of some of the purple and the green overlap each other so that the two colors kind of blend together on the stems themselves. But again, it requires very carefully going through and, and applying some of that color so you don't end up with big fat stems as well. But it's another place where it's really helpful to go to Google and say, hey, what do these flowers look like in reality? Because I want to make them look real and how do I do that? and the internet has all kinds of beautiful close-up pictures so that you can really dig into the details and see especially when we're working with stamps a lot you know stamps are not full of all kinds of hyper realistic details so kind of have to figure that out ourselves so I'm using that reddish purple color to add a few dark areas in some of my drops and then underneath each one of the little doodly bobs that hangs off of the the doodly bobs yeah that's what we call them doodly bobs hanging off the doodly bobs <laughs> I'm using a little bit of green for those and then picking up a few of the areas that my squirrel brain had kind of forgotten about and I wanted a little more green affirmed in a few spots on my flowers too a few places that needed a little extra touch so final touch on this is to lighten up some of that pink because I feel like I got a little over heavy with it and it ended up much darker than the pink color in my picture that I wanted to work from so I'm just gonna go over it with some white and you can do that to blend color and you can also do it to just adjust the color and make it a softer pink you can add very pale highlights it doesn't work to actually like try to add a white 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 highlight on it on something but it will actually do a little bit to add a little bit more lightness to your image itself if you need to add that at the very end. And so I'm using pretty good heavy pressure to do that and brighten things up. Once I had it on the card and everything was finished so it could sit there and dry, I put glossy accents onto all of my little dewdrops, which will call attention to them when the viewer sees them and realizes that I've put all kinds of beautiful dewdrops dangling off of my lovely fuchsia. So the card base was really simple and then I just added with dimensional adhesive my panel after die cutting it with a stitched die. Threw a little twine around it, called it good, and I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're enjoying everything from World Watercolor Month over on my social media and all the fun we're having and I will see you again in a couple days with another video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.